internet. I'm Emily. I'm a makeup amateur and a YouTube amateur and welcome to my channel. Today this video is going to be about a bunch of new product releases. Um, I already did one of these videos, I think it was back in January, maybe like early February, where I just kind of looked through a bunch of Instagram posts and talked about new products. The main purpose of this video is to kind of like quell my own excitement about new products and talk myself out of foolish spending and purchasing. That's not to say that these products are going to be terrible. That's not to say that they're not beautiful. And obviously I'm not judging you if you're really excited or you want to buy any of these things or if you have already bought any of these things. But I think sometimes it's overwhelming when you see the number of new products that are coming out and it's kind of nice to take a step back and maybe think about stuff you already own, stuff that already exists, stuff that might be a cheaper alternative and save you some money. First up, I want to warn you of two things. Uh, number one, it's a little late in the day as I'm doing this. And because the last video of this type took me quite a while to record because I had a lot of things to talk about, um, the lighting in my room is probably going to change a little bit, so it's probably going to get a little bit darker as we go along. The second thing is I am recording my audio through my computer. I'm recording a video of my face through uh, my tablet, which is where I usually record videos. And because of that, um, my lips and the, the audio might be a little bit out of sync when I finally get it all put together. So I do apologize for that. I'll try to keep that to a minimum, but just in case it does. So based on the way that I've saved things on Instagram, um, we're going to end up looking at the products uh, from most recent release to um, oldest release. These are all within the last, I think, month, month and a half, probably since the beginning of February, thereabouts. So um, the first thing I want to talk about is this e.l.f. collection, um, collaborating with Chipotle. I don't know if uh, you Americans know this or not, but a Chipotle isn't really a thing here in Canada. Like, I think I've maybe seen one. It's in Toronto, downtown Toronto. I personally have never been. Um, I do appreciate Mexican food. There was a, a really good um, burrito place that I used to go when I was in Oshawa for university that I really liked, but I actually don't really know of any around here that aren't like chain restaurants, but that's besides the point. Anyway, so this set is so freaking cute. It's Chipotle themed. And um, as you can see, there's a palette, a lip gloss, and some sponges here that look like an avocado. So, um, at first when I saw the palette, I was really confused because I was like, this is just so random, these different shapes and sizes of the pans. Like, why would you want less of these um, paler shades over here? Why would you want so much more of the green as opposed to this orange when I would think those are both like accent colors? But if you looked at the promo photos that e.l.f. posted on their reveal, it's actually supposed to look like the trays of toppings and condiments that you can put on your burrito. So I think it's really clever. Although if I did get this palette and I really preferred one of the tiny colors, I think I'd probably get a little annoyed that I get so little of it. However, these colors are really pretty. I think they fit the theme really nicely. Um, I think they go together very nicely. Let's take a look at some swatches. Well, these are the, the names of the shades, which I think are also really funny and they fit with the theme pretty well. I would love to hear like a beauty guru putting this on and they'd be like, oh yes, I'm now applying black beans and then over here I'm going to add green salsa. <laughs> that would just sound really funny. And there they are swatched on an arm, so they look pretty pigmented. I mean, some of these are, are kind of faded, but um, the greens, you know, and the purples where you really want that punch, they look pretty good. They have a red lip gloss. Is it a gloss? Yeah, so it's called the Make It Hot Lip Gloss. It's a bright red. And then they have it on somebody's lips and it doesn't look that red at all. <laughs> These sponges made me laugh so hard because at first I thought they were just like an accessory, like a, like a prop in the photo shoot. And then I realized it's actually two sponges, this bigger green one that has like a flat side on one side. And then there's a mini brown one that looks like the pit of the avocado. And I just bravo to Elf because that's really cute. Next up, um, another drugstore brand, Milani, has these brand new lipsticks. So they're calling them the color fetish shine lipsticks and they are vegan um they're a vegan formula i believe there are 12 of them according to this photo i've tried a few milani products and i have a blush of theirs that i absolutely love these are a new line obviously and i think the packaging is gorgeous i always love when the exterior of the packaging matches the color within so that you can kind of just tell at a glance in your drawer um which color you're reaching for so here's a couple of the shades shown um I thought I had a picture where they were swatched, but maybe not. Well, maybe, maybe I'll throw one on the screen. Um, so I did actually watch, um, they had a live stream swatching party type of thing with a model applying all the different shades. And now like a sheer kind of balmy formula with some color has become really popular lately. 
as opposed to like a more matte or a more opaque full coverage type of lipstick. Um, but one of the concerns that I've heard is that for people with deeper skin tones, um, you know, are these sheer lipsticks going to show up? And they had a black model doing this swatching party and they all looked beautiful on her. Like they were all visible when she went between each shade. And so I think that's a great idea for Milani to show that their products are absolutely um, accessible and, and will have the desired effect on people of all skin tones, you know, as well as just showing more representation and, and having black customers see themselves reflected in your marketing. So this post kind of um, encompasses a whole bunch of things. The one that I really wanted to talk about though are these Mentos and Sally Hansen nail polishes. Um, these are so freaking cute. I, I don't like Mentos, like the smell of mint, um, I think I've mentioned a couple times on my channel, the smell of mint bothers me so I don't like eat mints or anything, but they're so colorful. Here we go. There's a bunch of like the creme polishes and then I think this one might be metallic, this pink one down here. Um, and then there are two at least that have kind of sprinkles in them or like not sparkles, but like little bits of flecks of color. Um, and I think they look really unique. You can get them in pairs, I believe. Yeah, so there's at least two pairs. There's this one with Cutie Fruity and You're the Zest. And then there's uh, the Fresh Maker and Confection Perfection. So I don't know how you would go about getting these other colors that were shown in the picture here, but I think they all look really cute, really colorful, great spring colors. Having said that, I have a lot of pastel colored nail polishes, so I won't be buying any of these. Next up from Bare Minerals, um, these, <laughs> they are calling these uh, the Blonzer line. Um, it's, <laughs> which is a funny word, and I think it's kind of weird that they're calling it a blush and a bronzer when to look at these I definitely do not know anybody who would apply this pale pink shade as a bronzer like this one maybe it's still quite red so that's probably somebody with like a deeper skin tone where it wouldn't show up quite as vividly red um, and then even this one I I don't think I would use that as a bronzer they look like perfectly nice blush shade and I've I don't know that I've ever seen anything you know kind of be offered as a dual purpose product blush and bronzer unless it was like a brown toned blush if anything I would expect maybe a blush and a highlighter to be combined into one product because you could just have some shimmer and some people like shimmery blushes and some people like pigmented highlighters so those would work well together I don't know what you would call that though maybe bly lighter <laughs> Or a hush um <laughs> this is still I, I don't know I this is still kind of an interesting concept to me I would be interested to see if anybody could actually make any of these colors work as a bronzer bare minerals also has a new line of uh, lip gloss balms coming out so they're sheer color with a glossy shine and it's interesting that there's ten so they're just like kind of crammed these two into the corner here they're nice you know they they don't look like there's anything except for maybe this really deep brown I wouldn't say that there's anything um, exceptional to this line versus any other lip gloss line. Um, I have tried a couple of Bare Minerals lip products. They're pretty comfortable to wear, generally speaking. Um, you know, and a lot of people are really into that, like, kind of natural makeup kick nowadays, so that would be appealing to them for that reason. And as high-end makeup products go, um, they're not that outrageously priced. Like, these are the American prices here, so it's 24 for one of the blushes, bronzers, and 20 for the lip gloss. So next up, um, Tarte has a new line of cream blushes out. So there's just the three. Um, they also introduced a new brush. I almost said blush. They almost, they introduced a new blush brush for you to apply these with. I'm not a cream cheek product gal myself. Um, I know a lot of people are because it helps achieve that kind of dewy finish on the skin. And I really love the packaging and the brush itself, or that like robin's egg blue. I really love that color. So that's probably my favorite thing about them. Um, I think it's interesting that they only came out with three shades. So there's two that are a little more nude, a light one, um, a medium one, and then this like really rich, deep berry shade there. I think it's probably smart to start off with just three shades because then if your product line does really well, you can add shades in um, over time as opposed to releasing a whole bunch at once. Um, especially for something like a blush, where a lot of skin tones will suit each one of these colors. You should not start off a foundation line with a small number of shades, that's bad. We talked about that in the last video. As opposed to, like, starting off with a lot of shades and then your line is a flop and, you know, now you've got all these blushes you've wasted money on. I would not consider buying these at all. Um, <laughs> these are from Essence, which is another drugstore brand. 
Um, they're their vegan glimmer glow lipsticks and they have shimmery glitter particles and apparently on the lips um, it just looks like a soft rose shade so this is really just for packaging and marketing purposes that they've got this glitter embedded in them. However, um, I thought these looked really cute and they also reminded me of the uh, Unicorn Skin Hollow Taco Nail Toppers, which I recently bought several of um, and I am looking forward to receiving those and talking about those in a video very, very soon. Urban Decay put out some new products and I think these look really nice just at a glance, like the packaging. Uh, there's something really appealing about this clear kind of acrylic uh, package and then the the shadow pencils have like the color on the sticks and they just look very vibrant and cool. So Urban Decay is a brand that a lot of people have been saying is floundering lately and I think this is something new that they put out you know that that's probably going to market very well um, if they're high quality people are probably going to be really interested in them especially these moon dust shadows so these have shimmery finish um and they look really pretty even just from this one photo here they say they're caffeine packed i'm a little weirded out by that i don't know why i would want to be putting caffeine on my eyelids i mean i drink enough of it on a daily basis that i really don't need to be absorbing any into my skin especially near my eyes so um, it's probably, you know, one of those things that's supposed to help your eyes, they look tired or something, but um, I'm a little skeptical as to the benefits of that. However, they do look really nice. There's the swatches. I think this glitter rock one down here is probably the one I would be most interested in because um, it's kind of like a mauve purpley shade. Then they have these 24-7 uh, shadows. So these are actually, like, I think they're the same size, possibly. They're probably the same size as those other ones, but I think the other ones probably have, like, some kind of fancy ingredients in them. So they cost a couple bucks more. Um, I want to start off by saying I would actually never spend even $19 US on a single shadow because that's just way too much money. You could buy like an entire palette for that amount from ColourPop, you know. I don't need one shadow that's worth $19 or $22 American. Um, however, some of these look really pretty. I think it's a good idea to have like kind of a signature shade, like a really... Uh, eye-catching really vibrant shade in a single shadow because if you release a whole palette like that you know somebody isn't going to necessarily want nine or ten bright green shades you know but they might pick up one that they can then add on to a more basic neutral look i don't know that i would shell out to buy just a single tan shade um unless i was just going to carry that around and do really simple makeup all the time so there's some swatches in the more neutral ones and then the more colorful ones and actually you know what this set looks like the Club Nebula palette from Kaleidos. <laughs> and then this set looks kind of similar to, um, if you added in like a turquoise and a pale blue, it looks like the Urban Decay's new um, Naked Wild West palette, which I talked about in my last video. And I also talked about that Kaleidos palette in my last video. And then they also have these um, shadow sticks. I love this white one. That would look really good as like a base under something else more vibrant. Um, and then there's some blues. I'm surprised they didn't have more colors in these because like they, they kind of ran the full spectrum with the single shadows. And then these are either like neutral or there's blues and greens. So maybe they're planning on introducing more to that line. I would really like to see like a purple or maybe like a bright magenta um, in that formula. ColourPop has a new product launch because it would not be a new product video without a new ColourPop product. So this isn't like one of those whole collection bundly type situations, but it is um, a new line. So I'm assuming these are probably going to be incorporated in some of those bundles down the road. It is their Cheek Dew Serum Blush. So basically it's a liquid blush. Um, and it comes in a squeezy tube. I think that's interesting because a lot of the liquid blushes I've seen come either as like a dropper formula or if it's like a cream blush, it comes in like a compact. So this is kind of a in-between formula. Um, I would totally get this mixed up with like a lip product, <laughs> if I'm being honest. And honestly, maybe you could use it as a lip product because it's probably very soft and very emollient. They have 10 shades that they're launching right off the bat. So this is probably all of them represented here. And there they all are swatched. So they run um, into like kind of a medium brown shade. There's a red, there's some oranges and some pinks. Like these are pretty colors. I'm not personally going to pick them up because I don't really like cream or liquid cheek products, but I think this is interesting. Um, I'm intrigued to see how well they work for people. This next one is from Natasha Denona and it is one of their large, large palettes. So they have two different sizes of 15 pan palettes at two different price points. And this is the larger of the two. So this is going to be $129 US. I think it's like $163 
or 180 Canadian maybe. Um, it's, it's way too much money. <laughs> However, I think if we look at just the color story, I think this is the most colorful thing that Natasha Denona has ever done. The previous, I would say, colorful, colorful palette that they made is the uh, Tropic palette, which I own, but it is not all that colorful. If you cover up like the bottom row, the top two are primarily neutrals, and then there's like a yellow and a maybe richer pink. So, and then the other palettes that they have, like the five pans, tend to be a little more monochromatic. Of the 15 pan palettes, I think there was the Biba one, which was all mattes, and it was colorful in that it had, like, blues, purples, pinks, greens in it. However, they were also a little bit more muted, which doesn't necessarily have to be the case with a matte shadow. You can have, like, very rich jewel tones. You can have very vibrant colors that are mattes. So that one was a little more on the like soft dialed down the intensity desaturated that's the word i was looking for they're a little more desaturated they put out some really vibrant palettes in the last couple of years like the love palette and the sunrise palette both of which are bright but they're like kind of in one section of the color spectrum like the, the pinks the purples oranges reds and then like i think the sunrise has like maybe two yellows this one is so different just because it has like rich jewel tones, it has metallic jewel tones, and then it has like these lighter ones over here. That one's called Cotton Candy, I just noticed, which is the absolute perfect name for a shade that color. This one, I can't tell if that's a sil. I think this one's a silver and that's like a really pale icy blue. That one is like that robin's egg blue I was talking about earlier that I just love. I think this is a really, really pretty palette. And actually, the packaging itself is also gorgeous. <laughs> it kind of goes along with that theme, the circle loco with the name. Um, it's got like kind of a harlequin kind of look to it. I think this is absolutely stunning. Obviously, without even a second thought, I'm not going to purchase it because it's so much money. But it's one of those things that like I'm kind of just happy to know that it's out there. <laughs> I kind of hope that this shows like a new direction for the brand in terms of brights and colors, and I'm really intrigued to see um, what else they do next. Pat McGrath has some liquid lipsticks out. So these are the matte liquid lipstick. And I think this is a line either that they introduced like one or two from and now they're expanding the range or it was a thing that existed a while ago that they got rid of and now they're bringing them back. I'm not really sure. Either way, um, these look nice. They're probably like $70 Canadian. They're $30 American. <laughs> okay, so not quite. They're probably like 45 So I will not be purchasing any of them. I think, uh, you know, the shades look nice. I'm sure they're very pigmented because that's what Pat McGrath kind of has that reputation. But again, they're not really like anything particularly unique that you couldn't buy from a slightly cheaper high-end brand or even from a drugstore brand, if I'm being honest. Okay, so um, Hip Dot came out with this Easter set. It's a collaboration with the Marshmallow Peep Company which is pretty random. Mind you, we did see uh, a Hershey's Kiss collaboration for Valentine's Day, which I thought was really cute. So, you know, maybe it's not the worst idea. This palette, you know, it's small. Um, those are cute colors. I don't really know what kind of looks you're going to end up with using that. Um, these sponges made me laugh, though, because they're not shaped like peeps, because the peeps have the head at the front, and then they're longer at the back. Like, they're kind of shaped like a slipper, almost. And these are just ovals with faces on them. <laughs> like you could, you could have done a collaboration with like Cadbury mini eggs and been like, these are mini egg themed. Like the colors are really cute. And I love peeps myself. I know some people find them gross. I think they're, I think they're tasty, but I think it's really funny that they tried to tell us these are actually shaped like peeps. And anybody who's actually seen a peep just looked at that and was like, no. And a four piece sponge set for $16, again, American, um, that's pretty good. I, this is a world in which Beauty Blender is trying to tell us that one of their sponges is worth 20 bucks. So those ones, I mean, they'd be $4 each. So I think that's a pretty reasonable price. Huda Beauty has put out a new eyebrow pencil. I almost said liner. Um, it's got, it's got like a really fine tip apparently. I wouldn't know. So it says it's nine. It says it's a 0.9 millimeter tip. Um, I don't really know what that is in comparison to most other eyebrow products. I know that a standard like mechanical pencil lead is 0.7, so this is just slightly bigger than that, which that is a pretty fine line, although if it smooshes down at all, 
um, as you warm it up, then it might end up being a little wider. But I think this is kind of trying to give you the opportunity to create like individual hairs in your brows. I also think this packaging is interesting because it doesn't really look like anything that Huda has put out before. Like Benefit has a lot of products in their brow line that have this kind of like metallic industrial theme. Like they almost look like you need like a lug wrench to open them. I don't know if I'm using that term correctly. <laughs> I'm going to sound silly as hell. Um, <laughs> or, you know, um, Fenty has a lot of kind of geometric shapes in their product line. Um, you know, the, I could see this belonging to either one of those brands, but I think the packaging is like something completely different from most of Huda's products. And that's kind of weird. So I don't know if I've ever mentioned Dry Grace before um, on this channel, but my friend Victoria got me really into Dry Grace over the, this past summer. And um, so Trixie Mattel uh, is one of the queens from the show. That's her up here. <laughs> if you're not familiar, she has her own makeup company and they just put out their first ever eyeshadow palette. It's pretty. I mean, I don't wear a lot of blue eyeshadows myself, but if I did, like this is kind of how I would want to incorporate them into my collection where you have some grays, you could blend it out for a smokier look. Um, you have uh, one or two, uh, three metallics, I want to say. I think it's these three here. And then these uh, more vibrant colors are mattes. And then they also have a blue glitter that comes separately that kind of like ties everything together. Um, so honestly, the marketing about this is the most fun part. The inspiration was like daytime TV from the 80s. And so the outside of the palette, I don't think there's a picture here, but the outside of the palette looks like a VHS tape and it's so cute. So I'm really into that kind of like retro branding, which is adorable. Ooh, I didn't realize this one was a video when I saved it. Okay, so Color Rain is a Black-owned beauty brand. Um, I've received a couple of their products through Ipsy, I think. Um, I have a, a matte lipstick from them and a highlighter, and they're both very pigmented, very beautiful. These are the lip lacquers. So there's eight shades. Um, it's like a glossy finish, opaque kind of lipstick, and I think they're all supposed to be like nude tones. They are vegan as well. And this is like a new product launch entirely from them. I think they're really pretty. This one here whoop, <laughs> keeps moving on me. Let me see if I have another picture. Here we go. I think the one that I like best is this one, Veronica. I have a lot of nude lipsticks. Um, I don't necessarily have any that are kind of this sort of formula, but not something I need at the moment. So Morphe has um, these 18 pan palettes. They've been out for a while now. I think they introduced them maybe like a year or two ago. What they're doing now though is that they are updating the packaging. So they've also done this with the nine pan palettes and I really like what they've done because Morphe like used to have like the very standard black packaging. Like every single one of their palettes just was black on the outside. I don't even know if it actually like had the name of the palette anywhere on the outside. So I've ended up keeping all of the palettes that I have from them like in the cardboard box that it came with because the cardboard box has the name of the palette on it because that was really the only way I could tell them apart short of like opening them. Um, so I think this is a great idea for them to be doing. I'm kind of surprised they weren't doing this um, all along. So none of these are new, but they did um, update the packaging on them. <laughs> we got another beauty blender product. Okay. This one's also $20, and I'll be honest, when I first saw it, I thought it was supposed to look like um, coffee stains. There's a Marc Jacobs product that has that is coffee-themed, and so the outside looks like, you know, milk in the process of being mixed into coffee. I then realized upon closer inspection that this is supposed to be like a creamsicle kind of thing, and I don't know that I really buy that. Like, I think it looks brown, first of all, not orange, and second of all, I think it looks dirty. <laughs> so if this is your makeup sponge, and you know, so many people, myself included, are very lax about cleaning their brushes and their sponges, um, to the point that it's maybe not sanitary. This one at the very least comes with a cleanser, um, like a solid cleanser, which is good because, you know, it's overpriced anyway, but at least that kind of adds to the value a little bit. But it looks right off the bat like you should have to clean it or like you somehow got like, uh, you know, your foundation or your bronzer on it already. Uh, and I can't imagine it's going to look much better once you actually start using it. So that's a pass for me for sure. So on to the other big ColourPop release um, from the past month or so. I They actually did slow down a little bit since my last video. So this is the uh, Bambi collection. They've done just about every single Disney property that there is at this point. And I have to say, like, this is a great theme as we're kind of headed into spring here. I think, like, the X 
internal packaging is all really cute. The three palettes are two neutral palettes and then one purple one, which I think is kind of silly because you could have gone green with this one, like a blue. Just something a little bit more saturated. Like this one I see, like that's the, that's the shade of Bambi himself, so obviously like this makes sense. I love purples, so I'm not going to be mad at a purple palette, and this one is named after um, Flower, the little skunk. And then the Thumper palette is this one that's like beige and, and cool tones. I mean, I guess he's a bunny, so maybe you could have just kept it to two palettes then, I don't know. Anyway, you know what? I have a Lux gloss that I bought like last December from them that I'm pretty sure is like identical to that one, so. And then they have like, a loose highlighting powder and some lashes. And here are the eyeliners. So again, these are pretty standard eyeliner colors. I don't know that you need to run out and buy them just for the Bambi theme. Same for the lashes. I also think it's interesting that they did like a rectangular pans for these because these remind me of um, the ones that Sephora puts out like from their own collection. I have a couple of those and they're actually like surprisingly good quality. I think there's six pans. But the packaging is very similar, like it's little cardboard, it's like a long skinny rectangle, and then the pans themselves are each long skinny rectangles. So considering ColourPop has had like a lot of success with their nine pan palettes, and then they just started doing five pans that had square pans, this is like now another new kind of footprint that they're introducing to the line, and I'm curious to see if we will see more shaped like this. So I don't know how much these are. Okay, so I just jumped over to their website for a second. Each of the palettes with the five pans is $14, and then each of these other palettes with five pans, again, are $10. Now, it wouldn't surprise me if like a little bit of that is built into the fact that it's a collaboration, there's intellectual property, licensing, yada yada involved, but, and I obviously have not seen the palettes in person, so I couldn't like hold them up, but I'm curious about how much is in each of these then, because I wonder if those skinny rectangular palettes maybe aren't as small as they seem. Okay, so that's is 4.15 grams. They're exactly the same size. <laughs> so it's just like a markup based on the uh, licensing, I guess. That's kind of weird. Uh, well, and these do have a mirror, so I guess they're slightly better packaging. The plastic ones don't. So here are more of the newly redesigned Morphe palettes. These ones were all out before. I have this one, the Just a Crush palette. Uh, which this actually, like, it's interesting the effect that having a different color as a background, the effect that has on the eyes, because to me this looks so much brighter now than it does um, the one that I have. Um, not that I don't like it, but it's it's very interesting. I also have this one, the Vintage Rose, and this one looks a lot peachier. And they also look pretty similar to some of the ColourPop palettes. However, I think they came out probably like around the same time or even before some of the ColourPop palettes. So I'm not saying that they're trying to steal ColourPop's thunder with like the, the monochromatic palettes. Like two brands can be doing kind of the same thing at the same time and it doesn't necessarily have to be copycatting. I'm also wondering if these are maybe a little bit more slender than the other ones because the old packaging was kind of bulky for, for the size of the pans themselves. And I think this one's new this peach one. I haven't seen that before. I had been interested in getting this Lavendays one um, for a while, and then I, I ended up getting a lavender palette from Kaleidos, so I'm no longer in the market for a lavender palette, but I think that one looks really cool. I like the peach one, and I think this one's kind of neat too, because it's got some really bright shades in it, and then a lot of really pale ones that probably don't look that different, but they're, you know, pretty affordable as well compared to, like, larger palettes and compared to even the larger Morphe palettes, obviously. A lot of these are pretty monochromatic, but this one in particular, and then that one that has the pink and the reds, I think are pretty interesting in terms of the variety that they offer. Okay, I wanted to talk about this one, <laughs> not because I was tempted to buy it or anything, um, but just because it's fun. So this is, like, being released by Hot Topic, so I don't it's probably not very good quality. I think just like as an idea though, this is really cute. It kind of hits everybody right in the 90s nostalgia thing. When I was a kid, we like never went to Blockbuster. Um, there was one like relatively close to my house, but I don't know that I ever like set foot in it until I was maybe in high school because my high school was right up the street. And my family did rent movies. We would borrow movies from the library a lot because they were free but we also went to a couple of other like movie rental places like there was one when i was younger um called video scene 
that was like enormous. It then got taken over and ended up being turned into a Rogers store, which also rented movies for a while. And then there was one called Mr. Video near my house. And then when that one um, closed, we ended up going to this other one that I forget what it was called. There was an X in the name. I think it was like Extreme Play or something. And they also rented video games, but that was more in the time when like DVDs were more popular. So it was a pretty small store, but they had more stuff because you can fit way more DVDs onto a rack than you can with VHSs. So that was the one my family used to go to because they were also like really, really cheap. <laughs> like a movie was like a buck 29 for the weekend, like not a new release, but like the older ones. And so that's what we would do. And actually I was digging through like a bunch of stuff my dad wanted to throw out a while ago and I actually found his um, like membership card from that store. So I held on to it. It's going in a scrapbook. This just kind of brought back memories and like those colors, those are perfect. <laughs> like that's, if anything, I think there should be a purple one though because the one near me had like purple carpet. But other than that, I think this was, is kind of fun and um, definitely quirky, very appropriate for Hot Topic. So Tower 28 is releasing um, blushes. Tower 28 is another one of those like clean makeup brands that's kind of blowing up recently. I've never tried anything from them, but I've heard good things about their lip glosses in particular. So this is a lip and cheek balm. Um, I've said this before and I'll say it until I'm blue in the face. I don't really trust anything that claims to work for two different areas on your face unless it's a powder product. Because in my experience, anything of this nature is either too oily for my cheeks and it breaks me out or it's too dry for my lips and it's uncomfortable to wear. Having said that, I think these colors are really pretty. There's six of them. There's Oh, I see. So it's actually just that they're releasing three new shades and I already had three. Okay, I gotcha. So it's these three down here, the new ones. This plummy one is pretty. And the packaging is interesting because it's a lot like the um, those uh, eyeshadows from Urban Decay. So I wonder if that's a trend we'll be seeing. Uh, more and more companies just putting out like completely clear packaging in the future. Okay, so I don't have much experience with Artist Couture products. I think I have one of their loose highlighters. I probably got it on a BoxyCharm. This palette like literally stopped me in my tracks when I was scrolling through Instagram. This is so lovely. I think it's the perfect kind of springtime color scheme. This magenta, like that's my favorite color, period. <laughs> they, they look like they swatch really beautifully. There's three metallics and five mattes. There's some more neutral shades. This lavender is pretty. The teal, the pale blue, like everything about this is so gorgeous. And then they've got and then they've got that kind of like robin's egg blue, maybe like a tint of green in that for the packaging, which is also stunning. Now, they have one other palette in this sort of like footprint. It's the Caliente palette, which I've pulled up here. There was a month that this was going to be a variation in a boxy charm, and I did not want it at all. I believe it was because that month it was this or one of two Huda palettes and I had never tried a Huda palette before and I was really interested in those palettes so like I wanted one of them and I didn't want this one just because it was not one of them. Um, but at the same time I also was like, ugh, what am I going to do with yellows and oranges and reds? Like I don't, I didn't really see a use for this in my collection I probably would have given it away had I gotten it. And then they put this one out. And I just, my entire thinking about this, it could not be on the more opposite end of the spectrum. It's so pretty. This is probably going to be the thing that I talk about in this video that I'm going to keep circling back to, like, in my mind and wanting and desiring. Now, I don't think it is available at Sephora yet, either because it's never going to be available at Sephora or because it's just not at Sephora in Canada. I'm not sure, but if and when this comes to Sephora... I want it. <laughs> They've also got um, what they call their Diamond Lights finisher here. It's a new shade. Um, this is a line that already exists. It's also quite pretty. Um, it doesn't seem like it's really showing up on bare skin there, but I think if you like applied that on top of one of these shadows, that one in particular, it would probably look really nice. This color story is just like right up my alley though. Like you have shades that are close enough together that you could form like kind of a cohesive look um but like the cover a wide enough range they're like more on the pastel bright sides like this is where i live <laughs> in terms of my favorite colors speaking of really springy nice colors um this is a new palette from viseart it is the paris love letter entendu palette and i have never tried a viseart shadow i know um Emily Noel is really into them and based off of her recommendations I was considering getting one of the smaller ones I think they're eight pans when it was on sale a while back 
and I didn't. And since then I've been looking at the bigger ones and I kind of have questions about them. Like some of them seem to have pretty cohesive stories. This one in particular doesn't to me. Like they're all pretty neutral um, with like a couple pops of color. Usually the pops of color kind of go with the neutral shades in the palette. This one I don't think it does. So like these six absolutely belong together. You got a darker brown here, this one here, sure. Fairly basic, not particularly special. Now, this like pale kind of clementine orange goes beautifully with the packaging, and so I was I would usually think like, okay, that's where this is headed. You have a random green and then kind of a purple, like a pale metallic purple. Of the Viseart palettes, there are some that appeal to me far more than this one. They're also pretty small, um, like the ones in this packaging. Not all Viseart palettes, but like the ones in this packaging. Extremely expensive. So I will not be buying it myself. I, I would have to say though, like think about if you're considering this one, think about what you would do with that green shadow and whether or not it really works with the rest of the palette because that's where your eye goes immediately. They do look like they swatch nicely. I always love how they swatch stuff and they put like these flowers in the background. Like they always just look very pretty. Too Faced has a new collection. So there's a highlighter, an eyeshadow palette, and a lip gloss. So initially when I saw this, I thought it was going to be their Valentine's Day collection. And so I was like, oh, this is just like limited edition, one time of the year sort of thing. Then I realized that the day this was posted, this kind of like sneak peek photo was already February 12th. <laughs> I don't know when this comes out, but clearly it's not a Valentine's Day release if they're releasing it much later than Valentine's Day. So I think the palette is kind of basic. I mean, it's cute. It's got the little teddy bear down here, but there's a fair number of metallic shadows. I kind of don't like this thing that Too Faced does with their palettes where they kind of scatter the shades where they're not cohesive. It's like light, dark, light, dark, light, dark across the bottom. Like why wouldn't you group the light shades and the dark shades? Maybe that's just me. This highlight is pretty cute. Like I think the packaging is all really nice. Um, the extreme lip injection is not a formula I'm a fan of. I know some people like it. It's cute, but like save your money because you probably have most of these shades already. This is the uh, Fenty Beauty Duo. It's like a mini gloss bomb set and I think I have a problem <laughs> because I really really like the Fenty Beauty gloss bombs. I have four full size and four minis. It's like my favorite or second favorite lip gloss formula and I considered buying this when it first launched and then I had to take a look at myself and be like what is wrong with you? Because <laughs> there's two shades in this set. And I already own one of them. <laughs> so I would really just be buying it for one single mini shade, which is a new shade, Pink Dragonfly. And then this one is the original um, Fenty Glow shade, which is kind of like a peachy nude. I don't need it. I don't need one extra shade plus a repeat shade and they're small and then this like keychain thing which is kind of cute packaging like if you think back to like the lip smacker days everybody was like attaching their lip glosses to their pockets and their coats and stuff in my experience that's a really easy way to lose stuff ironically i don't know how secure this little cap holder is so i wouldn't bother doing that plus i'm a grown adult i don't need a lip gloss like dangling from my waistband or from my zipper or something so i wouldn't even use that <laughs> I'm not gonna buy it because I realized it was very dumb for me to want it in the first place. <laughs> okay, so the other uh, set that ColourPop released recently was a collaboration with Make It Black, which is an organization um, dedicated to increasing um, black representation and um, inclusivity in like the beauty community. So I did realize um, that this is like a repackaging of some existing products. Now they're marketing it using um, black people, you know, to show that it is pigmented enough to show up on deeper skin tones. Um, these are the lippy sticks that they had as part of the collection. I think I have the rest of it saved here. Yes. So this is a new palette. Um, they released them in, with black packaging and they did two super shock shadows. I, okay. So it says it's a mix of cult favorites and new and 100% of the profits from this collection are going to um, black founders. I'm just reading the description here through the Pull Up for Change Small Business Impact Fund, which is great. Um, I think they could have done a lot more in terms of like promoting black creators and in terms of like hiring black people, because we still don't really know if they've done that. But um, I think this palette is pretty, like just even just on its own merit of a color story. I think it's like nice and tropical. It's kind of hard to see. There's like a good glare on the lids here. So I don't really know what those super shock shadows look like. Let me see if there's another. 
yeah, there isn't really another picture, but, um, so one kind of looks to be like a pinky coral shade and then one's kind of like a bronze. I mean, they all look nice just based on like an aesthetic point of view. They look like nice colors. They look pretty richly pigmented. I hope that they are. That's kind of the whole. Okay, next up, and we're getting to the end here, is this palette from Violet Voss. Okay, so I like Violet Voss palettes. They put one out a while ago that was the, I don't know which syllable I'm supposed to put the emphasis on because I've heard it both ways, whether it's the Sakura palette or the Sakura palette, um, which is cherry blossoms, specifically Japanese cherry blossoms. That one is something I've had my eye on for quite a long time. I love the pinks. I love the range from the light golden shades to the darker kind of reds and browns. Um, I think it's very pretty. It was on sale at one point. I came really close to buying it. And then there was like a hint drop that it might be coming in a BoxyCharm box. So I held off and I didn't buy it. And I like Violet Voss. I had a couple of their uh, palettes in my monthly makeup caboodle for February. And I mentioned that then that the formula is great. They're very comfortable. They have decent pigmentation. So Violet Voss in general is a brand that I like and I would be interested in getting more of their products. However, this palette <laughs> is called Cherry. Actually, sorry, it's called I Love You Cherry Much. So we're on board with the puns again here, following in their I'll Love You A Lot palette. However, just like that palette, actually, it has so few colors that actually match like the alleged theme of the palette. Because if you have the one up here that's more of a pink shade, you got this one, I guess you could say like black cherry, sure, it's like a deeper red. And then that one, I guess, like this, this row, fair enough, this one, perfect. Do you think of bronze tones when you think about a cherry? Because I sure don't. In this palette, you could make the argument as well. However, I would say there are more pink shades. Pink as a color is better represented in this palette than pink or red in this one. In this palette, you could argue that like the lighter uh, metallics and then these darker browns that they're there as like an accent to the pink shades. Whereas with this one, like it's so many neutrals and then the pink and red shades are like an afterthought. Like you could even put a green in this palette, like a very bright green for the cherry stem. And that would have been fine. You know, like there's a lot that could be done with that theme that could be really fun. And maybe it doesn't need to be as big. Like this is an 18 pan palette. So I get that at a certain point, you're either going to be repeating yourself or you're kind of going to be like going out into left field, uh, like, you know, you could have like a brown and call it cherry cola or something, which actually <laughs> I'm squinting at these shade names and I've noticed they actually missed that opportunity. So that would have been kind of a fun name. Yeah, this one doesn't really speak to me. I think they have a lot that are already like, even I have the HG, the Holy Grail palette, and there's a lot of overlap here with that one. Okay, moving on. Milk Makeup released these color chalk, which are handmade, apparently. They're shimmery, you can use them on your eyelids, your cheeks, your lips, or beyond. I feel like you could have just put body because beyond sounds kind of funny for a buildable shimmering payoff. So they are all shimmer shades. Okay, I was wondering if there was any mattes. And they can be used wet or dry. Now my thinking is these have like a peel off paper wrapper, um, which I guess is like a little more eco-friendly than having like plastic, uh, like a twisty tube, like a lipstick would. These remind me of when I was a kid, my mom was really good at doing like face paint for Halloween and stuff. And we had these like waxy kind of crayon-y things that she would use for our face paint. And if the little paper wrapper like got peeled off or like came off, it was a gosh darn mess. Like you would try to hold one of these and it would get the color all over your hands. If you tried to set it down anywhere, like it, they, they were softer and waxy. So these might be a little bit of a harder formula, but like if you set it down on the counter, and you tried to pick it up, like there would be an imprint of the thing there. And of course, because it's supposed to be really pigmented and really like blendable, um, it was like impossible to clean up. So I really hope these are not quite as messy as they sound. There's 14 shades, there's 12 in the picture, all of which are like black, gray, neutral. And then you switch back to this picture. So unless the blue and the green are the only two that they left out from swatching, are they lying to us? Like, do they not have those? Okay, I guess there's one called yo-yo, which is this blue, and then green light is the green. Okay. <laughs> Because I was very confused by the swatches at first. I really think this is cute that they called these chalks and then all of the names are themed like activities you would do outside in the summer or like on the playground or something. Like that is adorable as far as theming goes. Hopscotch tag. Between this and um, that blockbuster palette, I'm feeling the crazy nostalgic of the moment. That's adorable. All right, so here's the last thing I have to talk about. This is a new line from Marc Jacobs. Um, 
First off, I want to say I think any and all makeup released by a brand that is primarily known for like high-end fashion is overrated and overpriced. Overpriced because they have the ability to do so with like the name. Overrated because you can get equally nice products from brands that are just strictly makeup brands. I have tried a couple of Marc Jacobs makeup products. They didn't really blow me away. And luckily I didn't pay full price for any of them. I think they were all like BoxyCharm things or maybe like one or two from Marshalls. So just off of that, I would say save your money. These palettes are kind of cute. Like they have these enormous palettes that they sell uh, bronzers and I think a highlighter or two in. And they actually split the pans up to be like a trio. So there's highlighter, bronzer, blush, highlighter, bronzer, blush. Nope. <laughs> That one was backwards, sorry. And this is what I was saying uh, that the Beauty Blender sponge reminded me of because this packaging is like really pretty kind of marbled coffee looking thing. So the whole theme of this is coffee themed. It's the cafe collection. So it's obviously it's all coffee themed. What I found interesting is that it has a foundation and concealer like within this line, but Marc Jacobs already has foundation. So either this is like a limited edition foundation or they're introducing a new line just so they could have a new foundation line and then these blush cheek palettes are gonna be like a permanent edition? I don't really know. It certainly is visually appealing. I still think it's overpriced, just like based on absolutely nothing other than the price. There are tons of other brands that sell much cheaper foundation. Oh, and there's caffeine in it too, so just in case you feel like adding more caffeine to your face. So that's the end of this video. Let me know what you thought about any of the products that I talked about today. Have you bought any of them? Did you think about buying any of them? Did I convince you not to buy any of them? Feel free to send me um, product suggestions for my next roundup of new releases, and please consider subscribing if you enjoyed this video. It would mean a lot to me. Thanks for watching. Bye.